All right, I'm taking a little break. Uh, I'm on doing the Fibers Enterprise C. Um, and when I did my last video, I realized that um, in all this this video series, I haven't really talked about the the other um, ships that I want to put in there because um, I just kind of forgot about them. So I thought I'd do kind of a uh, out of box review of um, the Nebula 2500. Um, I believe this is the the saucer for the Phoenix, and then uh, later on this weekend or next week or I'm trying to paste it out I'm gonna do some out of box reviews um, for some of the unconventional kits that you can still buy um, I already did it on the Orion the Nova the runabout um, um, interior uh, and I have a few others I'm gonna do the uh, about the second hand shuttle pod 132nd I think I have a 1400 scale um, Ferengi Marauder when I brought it bought it in shipping it was broke I'm gonna do some repair on that I'll probably do a review on that. The Valdor, the 1400 uh, Nebula. What else? I have a Turbo Death Star, which is actually like a really bad hit. And um, it, they still sell it on eBay, and I kind of wanted to go over that because it's something you should kind of avoid buying, and I kind of regret buying it. Sith Fighter, um, the Blockade Runner. I can never remember the guy's name. He's the guy that, that makes you know the Blockade Runner, and he makes... Um, the frigate, and he makes the Death Star, or not the Death Star, the Star Destroyer. Uh, Randy Cooper. So this is a Randy Cooper one. Um, it's my second favorite kit I have. I have a Super Star Destroyer, and then I can't remember the name of that Super Star Destroyer. It's the one that has a turbo laser in it. I'm going to do out of box for those. Um, so the other unconventional kits, Work B, um, Train, and Work B, Gorn Cruiser. I don't know why I bought that kit. Um, like I said before, I wasn't a huge fan of the original series, but for some reason, and this wasn't even in there, this was the remastered one. I like it, man. That one, oh, the, the Stargazer, the um, Vacuform Stargazer, Vacuform Bozeman, oh, is it, oh the Black Hole, the Cygnus, which I totally got for a steal. I think I paid like 80 bucks for it, and everyone knows that goes for well over 100. Um, I might do one of the, the um, Saluku. Um, but if anyone's watching this, I, I wouldn't, if you see one for sale, I really wouldn't buy it. Um, um, Polar Lights just got the license for Aliens, and I think they're going to come out with those. Um, so if you're thinking about getting one, you may want to wait a little bit, um, see what's going on. I know they repopped the Alien from the first movie, so you may want to hold off on those. What else am I going to do? Um, the Athena from Starship Troopers. Um, cool kit, not super cool. The Roger Young is cooler. Ice Pirate Ship. Um, and it, the coolest ones. This is my absolute favorite the favorite one I have. I cannot remember the scale, but it's it's as big as the box. It's a USS Saratoga from Space Above and Beyond, the aircraft or the space fighter carrier. So cool. Um, I want to do a separate review because I just want more people to, you know, know that this kit's out there and buy it, and that's why I do these reviews. Um, because some, some of these kits, people don't know you can get them, um, and they're just so damn cool. And Space and Above and Beyond, the guy who does this one, does this one, and he does this one. And I, I, what is it, Acme Models, I think it is. Um, and it's a nice kit, man, it's super cool. If you remember Space and Above and Beyond from the late 90s, awesome. So I really want to do that one, a review on that one, but I kind of wait because it's my favorite. Uh, the Hyperion from Alliance, which I don't think they make anymore. Um, small kit, not very expensive, but very accurate. And Alliance, um, their stuff is just really good, man. Warp, Shadow Ship, um, Mimbari Cruiser from maybe Warp? I don't know who makes, I, I don't know, I can't remember. The Omega Class Destroyer from uh, Warp, Barkiri Cruiser, and who makes that? Alliance. Um, it's funny, this one doesn't look too much like Alliance kit when you look inside. Um, if you watch Bad Grendel's review of this kit and builds series of the kit, Mine's just like his, the, the micro bubbles and some of the other issues and the pinning. Um, I actually watched his and that's why I bought this one. Um, he does a really good review of some of these kits. He um, does some, a um, couple of Vorlon kits. He does the Narn. He does the Barkiri and maybe a couple others. He has, if you just do Bad Grendel, search Babylon 5, he does them all in one video. Really good one. He's pretty skilled with the resin, so he kind of knows what he's talking about as far as the issues with it. Um, this kit is still available. It's a crappy kit. Super small. It's not really worth what it goes for, but I got it cheap, like, not 30 bucks, but like 40 bucks or something. It was pretty cheap. Um, Narn Cruiser. Maybe that's my second favorite kit. It's a big kit. It's a nice kit. 
very clean. Um, Bad Grendels did a review, so I don't know if I'll do one. I only want to do reviews if you if there's not really many available and a lot of people watching them, so there's really no sense in doing it. Um, the Fantastic Plastic Battlestar Pegasus 13700. This one was expensive, um, and my justification for buying it was I was kind of hoping um, to cast parts of it so that I could make a um, battle uh, a Galactica in this scale and a few others. Um, to be honest, I've only seen about half of the of the entire series. Um, I actually ended up deploying about halfway through, so I didn't see the rest of it. Uh, and I think that's it. I don't really want to do um, reviews of just conventional um, kits. I might do one of the the flying wing because I really uh, excuse me. I really like the the flying flying wings in general. I think they're super cool. Um, in Italy era, I think it's how you say it. I bought this one over. Um, I think it was Monogram. I don't know who made uh, the other one. This one's got a cockpit in there and some interior stuff. It's super cool. Um, but I'm going to do some reviews of those and, and pretty soon. But for the uh, the fleet, the uh, Sector 001 uh, Wolf 359, the, ship, the ships that I'll be including in there is not this one. This is the 1400 scale Norway. Um, but I like this class. I want to get one in 2500, but I don't know if they make it. Um, this is the, the um, Enterprise B. This is 1400. Um, the only reason I brought it out was um, I didn't know they made this. I picked this up super cheap. Actually, my wife bought it for me, which was cool. But I love when things are in scale. So this can be um, displayed next to your um, uh, Enterprise D, and you can call it the hood. Um, but um, I mean, the hood didn't have, you know, you know, it wasn't a refit. But I don't know. Let's see what we can do about that. Uh, so the Surak Class 1-1000, um, I'm not going to include this one either, but it's a super cool kit. I'll do a review of this separately. Um, I thought it was a little bit larger when I when I bought it, and it was moderately priced. Um, it's very clean, though. So um, it, uh, the Delta Quadrant models, this is really, really clean. Um, although I think there's some, I think this is actually warped out. I was dry fitting it. Looks like it's warped, but it's really clean. It's got registry pins and everything. Really nice kit. It looks like it's great to light, except for I want to light the ring, but I don't remember how it was lit in the show. And looking at the ring itself, it's uh, I don't know what I would do to light it. I know they sell. There's some type of fiber optic where the fiber itself lights up rather than the end. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't. I don't know what to do. As as that. If they make a larger kit, maybe I'd pick that up, but I think they do, but it's too expensive. It's like 140 or something, and I don't really want to spend that for a uh, kit I'm not that into. So these are what we're going to review now. This is the 2500 Nebula. Um, I don't remember what I paid. I think I actually paid about that. Um, I obviously bought a second hand off eBay. <clears throat> and this is made by... I don't know. Maybe it'll still say right here. I can open this. Maybe I should buy a tripod instead of buying models. Uh, well, it's made by Jeffrey Wawalski, um, and I've heard his name before with other people talking about it, so I'm sure um, when I say his name, a lot of you guys will know who he is. And what his company is, because I've heard his name so many times, I just don't remember what his company is. So instructions are kind of um, basic, but you don't really need them for this. Here's the decal set. Um, the coloring is a little weird. Not weird, like, um, I don't know, it looks like season one of TNG, really. It's not bad or anything. And I don't know if he made these, or, or um, JT, or I don't know. But um, they're adequate. Um, I would buy an aftermarket uh, Aztec, you know, D-set, and just use that. <clears throat> oh, and the reason I bought this, too, was it came with all these kind of freebies. Um, I don't think this comes when you buy the kit from the gentleman. This just came from the kit that I bought. So it has clear nacelles with the end caps. And these are, I recognize these. These are from Don's Light and Magic, so the person bought these. This would be the, um, the, the neck. And it comes with... Um, I don't know if this comes with the set or this is from Don too, I don't know. Um, but it comes with a clear secondary hull. Um, I'm not digging on it too much. 
there isn't a lot of surface detail. I think I would still <clears throat> rather use um, the the kit piece, and then I think Don sells a, nav a clear navigation you can get. Uh, now the sensor, um, whatever pylon, not pylon, um, I don't know pod. Um, pretty good. Decent detailing, some little weird stuff, but it's really straight. Some of the garage kits you get, a lot of the lines aren't straight. That's how it is in the, um, the Ferengi Marauder. Uh, it's just not very straight. But this looks really good. It's really good. And um, here is the um, pylon the, um, pylon assembly. There, It's like nearly smooth on the inside. That's weird. It's nearly smooth, like nothing there. The back side has got um, some soft detailing. I would go with the original kit piece rather than using this, especially since the resin. Well, this doesn't feel like resin. Resin does um, um, warp over time. I'd rather use the um, kit piece, cut it off, fix up the edges, and go with that, especially since the kit piece has more detail. Um, the saucer. I really don't dig the saucer at all. It's completely devoid of any detail other than the phaser strip and uh, what you see around the um, landing, uh, the shuttle bay and the bridge and the, I'm not even in the front. And little, the dealies, it's all totally smooth. There's nothing. I mean, I would obviously put um, Aztec in decals anyway, so that's not really an issue, but the detail that is there is really nice. It's all straight, it's good. That's not so good there. And actually, now that I think about it, there's a divot. I can, it's not gonna focus, there's a divot that goes all the way around. If you look at, okay, mine's a little more. You see how it, there's that trench in there? Um, that's apps on this, but I wouldn't want to use this anyway because I'd want to light this kit up, so I wouldn't use this anyways. I would just use um, a kit piece. I don't know what the hell I would do with this. Um, when I build this, if someone's interested in this, if I end up not using it, I'd be more than happy to give this to somebody if they, I don't know what the hell you do with it. But speaking of that, um, I bought this off of eBay, um, and I think the class is a Phoenix class. I could be wrong. Um, man, it's got two, th what this is, this is a um, defect or reject um, from whoever makes this kit. And I can't remember who it is, but they're an established um, like StarCraft or somebody, I can't remember. Um, and the reason it's a defect is right here, all that right there, and right in there, all the defect. Um, and what's weird about this, the Aztecing, maybe this is common in, in these, uh, I've never seen it, all the Aztecing is like raised, almost like it is um, Lou Damaso's, his vinyls, almost like the vinyls were put on here, and then this, the mold was taken of it, it's weird. Um, the phaser trench is the most detailed I've ever seen. It actually looks like um, JT Graphics aftermarket photo watch for the 1400. I mean, that's really, really nice. This has got much better detail. In fact, these don't, don't even look like on the same scale. I and mean, look at this. Look at that. That is crazy. It's the same size. It's the same size. The bridge is flatter, smaller. That is crazy. That is just crazy. All the, all those other differences too. The, um, the shuttle bay, the main shuttle bay, shuttle bay one. This is more like the kit piece. Let me pull the kit over here. Right there. The kit, there's the kit right there. You see how it is? That's a lot more like that. This is different. This actually looks like it's in a different scale. Or it's a, because it looks like this is actually smaller, or the, the thing is larger. This is um, a smaller portion. That makes sense, because you see how the bridge is so much larger. This is 2500, but this doesn't look like 2500. This looks like, um, I mean, it's hard to say, because the win I'm trying to look at the windows. The windows are larger too. Not 1 1000, but like, could it be like 1400? It almost looks, you know what, that's, not sealed. My kids like to paint. 
you look at that, you see that, that uh, bridge module? It's the same size. Let's see if I can pull it. Here it is. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Boom. So this is a 1400 scale bridge module that was added to this. That was put onto this. What they did, I know what they did, is they took the uh, 2500, they put, I think they put Lou's um, vinyls on there, because I think he also makes vinyls for the lifeboats. Put this over the top of that, did other detailing, changed this, because this is doesn't look like anything. Oops. And there it is. And if this is, I mean, a bridge can't change that significantly in size. I mean, I mean, so is this um, Phoenix class heavy bridge that's twice the size of other um, ships of the contemporary era? I don't think so. So when I bought this, my plan was to scratch build all the missing things because I think it's kind of just like the nebula. I don't really remember it all, but there's two things that go up on top, and then I can't remember it all. The warp engines are down here somewhere. Um, I think it's basically the same as the nebula except for the sensor um, pod is different. But now looking at the bridge, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Is that bridge right there, here it is right here, see the size? I'm not talking about the large oval. I'm not, oops, I'm not talking about the large oval. I'm talking about the little bridge part. That little bridge is almost the size of the window that would be on top of TNG, the, the clear window that if you look above Picard and all them, you see the, you see the space outside. That bridge is almost the size of that. That would be enormous. Um, I don't know if I'm going to include this. I was doing a, I was doing an out of box review because this is going to go in the um, the fleet, but I don't think it's going to. I don't know what I'm going to do with this now, and especially since it's so damn heavy. It's solid resin. Um, uh, I don't know how it'll light it. All so far, all my ships are lit. And since it's just since it's just a sensor, I paid really cheap, like ten bucks for it or something. Maybe I'll just do a. That'll be part of the damaged derelict fleet in the back. I don't know. Uh, I think that's it for the 2500 out of box review of weird ships I have. Thanks for watching.